welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at ions and forming ions. And we've actually done this previously, so this will be a little bit of a recap for you. Previously, we've looked at the periodic table, and specifically, we talked about groups and periods. So to jog your memory, if an atom wants to have a full valence shell, and remember valence is that outer shell, so the last shell that it has, it's going to be more likely to gain or lose electrons in order to do that, depending on how many it's got. Um, we talked about this example of like a roller coaster ride. If the ride can hold eight people and you've got seven and you're never going to run the ride unless it's full, what's the best thing? Are you going to kick off that seven people or is it a lot easier just to get one? And you're going to get the one because that's easier. However, if you've only got one person on the ride, you're probably going to kick them off and wait for the next group and add him to that. So that's kind of what the electrons are doing. So groups, just to recap. Groups are the vertical columns. Remember we had the acronym green vegetables are very healthy. So GV, green vegetables, green is, uh, groups are vertical. This is the number of electrons in the outer shell. So green vegetables, groups are vertical, number of electrons in the outer shell. We care about that because that's the bit that we're going to talk about in terms of whether it's going to gain, like steal an electron or give up an electron. But we also need to know how many that shell can have. Therefore, we need to know what shell that is. That brings us to the next one. So firstly, all of those group one has one electron that's out of shell. The second column has two, so on and so forth. One thing you'll notice is depending on the periodic table, they're often numbered one, two, and then they jump to three. However, some versions, they continue to count from three, four, five. They include all of these intermittent um, elements here. However, this will still become 13. So if you just remember that for the, the 10, so 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, you just ignore the 10 part. So 13 is, is actually group three. It has three electrons in its outer shell. This one, the 18, has eight electrons in its outer shell. Ignore the 10 part. So elements that have the same group have similar physical and, chemi and chemical properties. So that's why they were put in that column as well. For example, the group one, so that first vertical column in the periodic table, are all what we call alkali metals. And they react very strongly with water. So things like sodium, potassium, francium, you can put them in water and you're going to see a variety of different reactions. It actually increases as you go down the periodic table. So they're more aggressive as you go down. We can see that here. So sodium... If you add that to water, it often will sort of smoke and it might, you might have a little bit of flame. Potassium, you normally get a bit of fire, it'll whiz around, sometimes it, it explodes. And if you work your way down to like rubidium um, and francium, cesium, even further down, you get a much more aggressive reaction with water. So the periods. Periods is horizontal, remember, pretty healthy. This is the number of electron shells. So everything in that row, the horizontal, has the same number of shells. So everything here has four shells, three shells, two shells, one shell. So we can use that information to go, if you're here, you have one shell, but you have one electron in, the, in that shell. Or in, the, in this case, sorry, you have, it's a bit, it's a bit weird with, um, with helium, but it's got a full shell. It's got one and it only has one in it, but that checks out because it only contains the one. So it's all good. So let's look at some examples. Let's consider fluorine. Fluorine is over here, number nine. It's in group 17, so if we look at it, old system, remember, you go one, two, it includes this, three, four, five, blah, 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 17. So it's in group 17, period two. That means it has seven electrons in its outer shell and it has two shells. So its electronic configuration would be 270, how many does it want in that second shell? It wants eight. So it's going to gain one. It's not going to give up seven. So therefore, it'll gain an electron. An electron's a negative. And therefore, it's going to become an ion. It's going to become F minus. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about ions. If you gain an electron, you become negative. We would now write this as F with a little minus. And this is called like a superscript. We write the negative at the top. So that indicates that this is not ordinary fluorine. This is charged fluorine. It's a negative charge because it's gained an electron. Other elements, such as things like aluminium, 
we'll actually lose three electrons. And then we would write that ion as Al3+. So still using that superscript, make sure it's written at the top. We're using this notation. So three plus, not plus three. Even though I know it seems more obvious to write, well, it's a plus three charge, we write it as a three plus charge. So that's a quick recap on ions. We're gonna use that very, very soon when we start looking at bonding and ionic bonding in particular. And I'm gonna see you next lesson.